Ladies and gentlemen, welcome in to the Bama Standard Post Game Show. Just go ahead and get things started up. You know what to do. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Live chat. Well, I don't, I don't have to say anything to you right now because you're going to get it done. If you're watching the replay, get in the comment section. Show us some love right out the gate. Shout out to Donovan <laughs> Milliken. $5. Congratulations to Alabama. Dominated second half. Jill Milro is gutsy. I hope with a new realignment, we don't lose this game. Go Vols. Okay. We appreciate of all being here and being respectable, most definitely. But, hey, we're here to celebrate 34-20 Alabama over Tennessee. Smoke them if you got them, and our panel already <laughs> is. And we got some representation from all of our shows on this network. We'll start off with Cece from the Crimson Dynasty. Welcome in. Glad to have you on. <laughs> And then we got the illustrious Dan James from the final whistle. And just Smoke below him, got him. <laughs> just below him, representing B Sci Fi National Champion. B Sci Fi. Hey. And then oh, oh, the, the, oh, oh, let's go. oh <laughs> the champ is here. <laughs> We're doing it right tonight, folks. And right next to him is Chris James from the final whistle, Dan's big brother. And he's Man. got one he's going to smoke, too. And Let me show y'all something. See, this oxygen tank, I need to be resuscitated earlier. <laughs> After that first half. Understandably so. Understandably so. But last but not least, a man that never holds back his thoughts. He doesn't sugarcoat it. He tells you like it is. He is our new fan turn analyst of the Bama State Network. Lucian, welcome in, everybody. Glad to have you here celebrating a win third Saturday in October. Whew. Cheers. Well, try well, let's get things started right off the bat. Let's get your immediate thoughts. Well, actually, let's pass it around the room. I'm curious to know what your uh, thoughts were going into the game. What did you need to see? What questions did you have? And more importantly, did were they answered? So we'll start with CC. We'll go over to Dan, move down to Chris. Then go to the other Chris, then back to Lushan, and I'll kind of cap it out. Go ahead, Lu uh, go ahead, uh, Cici. Yeah, yeah. So I actually said on my show this week, the Crimson Dynasty, that I thought the score would be 35-17. Now, I didn't know how that was going to look. Um, you know, I didn't think it would look like that first half that we saw, but I guess that just goes to show that, you know, it's all about – winning, but I'm glad that we had a larger point spread than we've had in the previous week. So, I mean, overall, I'm happy with what I saw. We definitely made adjustments at halftime uh, because the first half, I'm like, Tommy Reese, we about to come basically drag you out of that box because I'm about tired of you at this point. But <laughs> I'm glad to see that we made some adjustments. I'm glad to see. I mean, to me, we look hungry. To me, that's a championship team. I I'm going to still call it like that until I see otherwise. But I'm glad with what I saw. Um, I said 35-17. It was almost that but i'm proud of our guys yeah without well, uh, i was close though i had 30 20 so yeah, I, yeah. I like to claim victory there too yeah dan what you got man i know that you had a lot of questions and you're never yeah. satisfied so, were you satisfied <laughs> tonight <laughs> yeah definitely uh going into the game i i was concerned you know what i'm saying my concerns were you know let's minimize turnovers let, let, you know uh let's move the pocket we still not doing that, but three was utilize Jalen Miro in the run game. The re the reason that that helps us out is beneficial to us. It opens up multiple run lanes. You know, say it complements the run game. So we 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 were able to do that today. But my biggest takeaway, y'all, is how about that second half performance? You know, that's what we didn't do. Mm. You know, you can tell Coach Saban been preaching it all week. You know, let's finish. Let's finish. And, you know, I, I can say I'm deeply satisfied how the way we finished this game as opposed to last week. Oh, no doubt, no doubt. And we found some offense along the way, did we not, gentlemen and ladies? Uh, Chris, I'm curious to hear from you. We talked to you at the beginning of the season. You made a pretty bold claim on your Twitter. You said we're going to the national championship and you don't have to hear anything from anybody. Not quite there yet, but tonight's a great start. What were some of your questions, man, and were they answered the way you hoped? I think this game, especially seeing how last game played out, I really just wanted to see how we handle tempo on defense and then how we manage that on offense. With an offense that tends to quick strike, they score so fast. If you can get those guys into quick three and outs and we control the clock, you limit their possessions. 
and you kind of make them become one dimensional. And I think in the first half, they kind of got away from us a little bit. But once we settled in, made those adjustments in the second half, got those guys playing behind the sticks and they started getting some more penalties on offense and defense. I think we were able to play our style of game and we controlled the tempo and ultimately just close it out. Yeah, no doubt. Before the other Chris gets the baton, what was your overall assessment of the offensive line? I felt like the entire game, they probably turned in their best performance. I think that Proctor only had one oops play, but uh, as a whole, I was very pleased with what we saw and it put us in positions to where we could do more. I was, I was really excited to finally see some growing up of sorts from this group. Yeah. I definitely feel like our eye discipline was a lot better. They blitzed a ton, especially early on in the game. And so for us being able to be in the right spots, pick up those blitzes and allow Miro to sit in the pocket, he was comfortable from what I can notice. Um, we didn't have as many chips as I thought we would have, but they played pretty good one-on-one -on -one and passed off the games and, and T book is Booker's amazing. Mm. Yes, he is. He's a man amongst boys today from what I saw. I love that T book, man. Hey, what about Jaden Roberts? We thought yeah. that he was down and out, looked like he was literally on his last leg. And I guess somebody prayed over it and filled him with the Holy spirit in the second half. Well, before the second half and he came out there and he played like a man pissed off. Ray Lewis always said pissed off for greatness. And, he looked the part on several drives. It wasn't just Booker destroying people. It was Roberts. My gosh, I, I'm so glad that he's been inserted in this lineup. Yeah, he looked good. He looked really good. And he's always been somebody in the program that's, like, extremely strong, extremely fit. And so for him to finally get in, especially with still trying to figure out how to get his experience, like, ramped up a little bit, learning on the fly, for him to fill in and then overcome some adversity, um, it was really good to see, and that's a really good growth moment for him. No doubt. All right, Don Parker, $5, not pretty, but I have to do it because I hate Tennessee. Still low yeah. down, still dirty, still snitches. Smoke them if you got them. And R they stink. <laughs> RTR. Chris James, the moment is yours, sir. Over oh, there looking like Shaft. <laughs> It's Elroy. It's Elroy. Oh, it's Elroy James, y'all. We got we have a we have a celebrity in the house. Elroy. Oh, no, no, fast. But man, seriously though, it was a tale of two halves. Um the first half, it was it was it was hard to watch, man. It was hard to watch. Oh, was it? It, it, was, it was tough. But um I knew I knew it was I knew we had something when we um Miro got I think it was was a strip sack, fumble a uh, fumble. A strip sack when they yeah. recovered it inside um I think it was inside the 30 maybe even inside the red zone and they only got three points out of that uh, because I feel like if they would have scored um if they would have scored a touchdown whatever made it 17 nothing yeah mm -hmm. it made it 17 nothing and now you're talking about two different ball games as opposed to 13 to seven and um and, and 17 to nothing I mean 13 to nothing and it's 17 to nothing so that was that was a big stop by the defense and kind of what what um what what shifted it for me as far as our defense uh, getting stops, um, but I think the last big play they made was that touchdown pass before half when they went up twenty to seven. Yeah, After that man, we went on a twenty seven nothing run. That was a that was a thing of beauty, man. It looked like the 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 saving teams we know. You know what I'm saying? Those those twenty twenty fifteen to twenty twenty offenses that we've had in the past. I mean, we just put on a clinic, man. And um, what I was most excited to see was Jason McClellan getting 100 yards on this Tennessee defense. Yeah. Because they've been pretty stout, you know, all year long. And uh, to see us, to be able to run the ball, when, when to, to put a game away, to ice a game away, man, that was – that made me smile, man. That, that's that murder ball that we're we're getting back to. Uh, but overall, man, the second half, of we played like – we played the second half coming out of halftime, nobody's beating us. It's gonna is because I like I feel like our defense is good enough to keep us in every game, no matter if we're playing Washington, Ohio State, Michigan, doesn't matter who we're playing. And um, now you think about it, we get a week off, we get a chance to um, prepare for LSU two weeks, and mm -hmm. um, with momentum you and heal and heal up too, and, and heal right. up right. Yeah. And, and and how about how about um, uh, Trey Amos, man? Coming in in the second half, yeah, and, um, to be able to have that third reliable corner that can, that can man, that's huge, man. 
That's huge because you think about when Tennessee, when number five went out for Tennessee, that was it for them. Yeah. Because wh- whoever came in behind him, it, it wasn't – you could tell it was a drop-off. So yeah. um, just to be able to have guys step up and Jihad Campbell, yeah. man, I'm, I'm, I yeah. could just keep going on for days, but I'm going to let Lucian have it. Hey, before Lucian has it, Crimson Kings 499 defense shutout second half. Crowd was crunk second half after the opening touchdown. My Cuban tastes sweet with that uh, maker's mark. <laughs> Love y'all. Roll tide. And then Cubert 3343 499. Kool Aid has to be off punt return. RTR, great win. We'll definitely hit that after Lucian gets his point. Chris, if you would uh, pin that for me so we can go back to that talking point. But uh, man, I, to kind of piggyback off what you said as far as Trey Amos, I didn't realize that Terrell Arnold was out of the game until uh, Gary Danielson mentioned it. That's how well that Trey Amos was playing. Man, hats off to hit, to him today coming up in one of the biggest moments of the season where it had the feel of a playoff game because just look at it. It really was a playoff game. One game elimination for Alabama for the national championship hunt or playoff hunt. And uh, definitely the SEC. Lushan, what you got? What were your questions going in? Were they answered? And, yeah, just give us your overall take to start things out. I'd have to say my main question uh, going into this Tennessee game was how uh, our offense is going to be schemed. Was uh, our left tackle going to be schemed where he was going to have help so that he can better protect Milrow? I think that question was answered as the game went along. Uh, they gave us some sacks, but I think uh, for the most part, the pressure was pretty much alleviated as we've seen in uh, the past weeks from the left side of the uh, offensive line. Another question I wanted to answer was our defensive line going to hold up against that stout Tennessee rushing offense. And I think they uh, more than answered the bell on that. They were under their uh, yards per game average. And Mm -hmm. I think they filled holes and they hit hard. So I think my questions for the most part were answered. We still got have yet to see a four quarter game. Yeah. But once we do, like Chris said, we're we're one of the scariest team in America because we just did that in the second half. They didn't right. score twenty seven unanswered points. I mean, right. that says it. That says it all right there. We have the ability to go where no other team has the ability to go. And I mean, look at the first half we played. I mean, that's about as bad as football as you can possibly play. Tail two halves says it all. <laughs> A quick shout out to Gavin Kane. He did get this score exactly right, and he's let us know in the chat. Sorry about that, Gavin. Didn't mean to uh, ignore it. We're just trying to get to everything right now. As far as I go, I had a few questions going in. Number one, I think we all were asking, can Alabama play relatively mistake-free football? And for the most part, we did. We had one penalty for five yards that – uh, five that five yard penalty snap infraction from Seth, nothing, no big deal. But I can't remember the last game where we didn't have a a penalty free or close to no penalty game. Man, uh, hats off for their, to their discipline this week. Can Alabama avoid the slow start and play f- dominant four quarters? Well, I think we know the answer to that. But they showed up when the bell <laughs> was sounded, and that was the second half, and. I think the Alabama we've been praying for and longing for finally came to the stage in a big way. And one of my main questions was, is this going to be a game where the offense takes center stage and they take the pressure off the defense? And they did. They showed out. And maybe this is the game where that the fifth-level boss of Alabama is, is unlocked. And going forward, we see us really put our foot on the gas. All right, so let's let's talk about what stood out to us the most uh, as far as, I guess, Tommy Reese. My gosh, that's the first thing, right? The good, the bad, the ugly. The good here, Tommy Reese finally stopped the vanilla play calling and unlocked an offense that, honestly, we didn't think existed. Like, see, she said she was ready to go into the booth, drag him out, <laughs> toss him over the side, and call it a night. Well, she didn't have to in the second half. I guess she felt he felt the vibes that were being generated. And all of a sudden, we're seeing pre-snap motions. We're seeing him going deep into his bag, making plays that just, man, astounded me. But, guys, how much of a difference did that make in the, the outcome of this game? We'll start with Lou, Sean, go to Chris, 
then Chris number two, Dan, and Sishi. I think the offensive scheme in the second half says it all. They came out hot, scored on the first couple plays of the opening drive of the second half, and that set the tone for the rest of the game. They got the defense riled up, and right after that, the defense makes a play. So I think uh, Nick Saban went into the locker room, and he made it about, like, listen, we need to have some momentum going into the second half because the first half, we, it was dormant. Didn't really see energy, you know, but they came out in the second half, and they got it done, so – that's all we can really say. Until this team uh, comes out and plays, you know, a little bit more with a little bit more intensity in the first half, I mean, we still have a little bit more to go. And I think that's a good thing. You don't want to peak at this time of the season. I want to peak in about three or four weeks. Most definitely. I think also we saw why we have not been running screen plays because apparently people forget how to block on those. But we're not going to talk about that. Chris, <laughs> <laughs> James. First off, let me let me say my word must have gotten back to Diz how picking against us because the whole, <laughs> the whole game they crew was on board today. But um, but the first half um, I, it, it's just it seems like the scripted plays, man. Like Tennessee's scripted plays were were on point and ours mm. weren't on point. <laughs> but <laughs> but once we get those, those adjustments, man, um, I, I'm proud of Proctor, man, because he held his own, man. Like just like, as Chris can tell you. Like playing tackle, man. That that junk is, it, it's it's crazy, man. One on one against SEC guys on on the edge, and and he he held his own. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, besides that that play where he got beat around, like Miro probably could have stepped up in the pocket a little more, but that that was a you know a tough ask. But um, they held their own, man. And Latham was just mauling folks, man. Yes. <laughs> right Latham, I, I knew it. I knew it at some point because those guys that Tennessee have on the edge. They're not they're not really big guys, so I knew we'll be able to have success in the running game. Now that's when we, we use our size, all those three hundred pounders we have up front. That's when we use our size when when they put those small edge rushers out there. And man, Latham was just eating them alive, man. But um, once we established that running game in the second half, it seemed like the first half we we, we got we weren't having success on first down. It's like they were selling out to stop the run on first down to put us behind the chain. But once we started getting four, five, six yards on first downs, I was like, uh-oh, you know, and that's when you can open it up a little more because second and five or third and three is much easier to navigate than second and ten and third and nine or third and eight. It's, it's so much more easier to navigate, and you have a, a more open playbook. You know, you can take chances on on second downs when, mm -hmm. uh, when, when, when you get some positive yards on first down. But I think the play that – Kind of trigger things that when Kendrick Law, the jet sweep to Kendrick Law, oh well, not the jet sweep, but that pop pass to Kendrick Law, um, it was it was it was beautiful, man. That pop pass, it, it it was beautiful because it was like, oh, where did that come from? We haven't seen one, you know, one of those since was it Sark? The last time we saw, we yeah, saw one of those? yeah, you know, the Sark, yeah. So, <laughs> so uh, it's just the when we caught rhythm, um, when we when we caught fire when we were on rhythm. Man, it, it's a thing of beauty, man, because the defense is already playing at a high level. Then when the offense can match them, hello, Atlanta. I don't, I don't want to say it, <laughs> but, but, you know, we we look like that, man. I don't care. LSU, Georgia, nobody's beating us, man. That's, that's just what it's going to be. Chris, number two. <laughs> what did you like about the play calling and – and how did you see it just free everybody up, especially Jalen Milrow? It was so exciting to finally see some quarterback design runs. It's finally exciting to see him take the yardage that was there instead of just hanging back, taking sacks in the second half. I don't think we saw that, but what – or did we see it in the second half at all? Jalen was finally allowed to be Jalen, and we it paid huge dividends. But, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, for me, I – I actually put down in my notes that the first explosive play, like you were talking about, didn't come until the second half. And that first quarter was like they had the ball for over 10 minutes compared to our forward and change. So we didn't have a time to get in the rhythm. It felt like we were in our opening script until like midway through the second quarter. But once we got that jet sweep, everything kind of opened up. We got into the perimeter. Um, they weren't able to tee off as much on us on those double teams and triggering the linebackers up front. They had to kind of play sideline to sideline. And I think, like you said, when we get Milro involved in the running game, that's an extra defender that they have to worry about. Yes. He's probably the fastest player on our team. And we've got to be able to 
mix things up. We can't get so predictable to where it's inside zone drop right. back, inside zone drop back. I mean, defenders live off that. They watch film. They've seen his history at Notre Dame, Coach Reese. They've seen all of that. So they know what we want to do, and they know where our weaknesses are. And it's our job to kind of, like, mitigate those weaknesses and move things mm-hmm. around. So we saw some motions. We saw some pop passes. Even if we don't connect on screens and deep shots, we have to do it to keep them honest a little bit. But just giving them something different to look at, even if it doesn't work. Don't let them get comfortable and make us want the most. Shout out quickly to Timothy Pass, $1.99. One penalty, only one. Yes. <laughs> hey, Justin. Definitely. Hey. Can, can you just imagine – Miro, like what we saw today with his legs, Miro against Jaden Daniels in two weeks, just the oh, ability of both of them to run the ball. Man, that's going to be whew. Man, if, if the Jaden Jalen Miro of the second half goes against Jaden Daniels, oh my gosh, the treat we're going to be have have placed in our laps. My gosh, that's going to be some great football. I like Milro's chances. Dan, yeah, uh. Did you call Tommy Reese on your your phone over there at Waffle House in between shifts? I'm I'm, I'm gonna make a confession, y'all. Uh oh, I missed <laughs> I missed that first second half uh, score because I was so pissed. Oh. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm I'm not gonna lie. When I heard the phone go off <laughs> and the group text, I was like, okay, <laughs> yeah, man. I was I was mad after, after that score right before the half. Man, I went butt chugging. You know what? But seriously, man, let, Chris, where's your boy that was here last week? That Damn. said, you know, Tennessee was going to be, and I said the way it's going to happen. He said, no, this the same team that ran over the on Man, we hate Tennessee. Tennessee. Yeah, where, where, where is he? Bring him on. Give him a call. Man, he's crying, man. <laughs> Good. I hope he's crying. I don't think until 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 next week. But I hope he can't breathe with all that cigar smoke coming from Two Town too. <laughs> but you know, with that said, you know, uh one thing I want to make since it's my turn again, man, let's get Kool-Aid the hell out of punt off of punt. Mm. Let's do that. Let's we're gonna come back to that. We're gonna, we're gonna come back to that. Push push put yeah. that pin right there. Yes. Uh, right after see she goes. Let, let's talk about that. Yes. See she, you've waited a while, you've heard what everybody had to say concerning Tommy mm-hmm. Reese and the play calling. Do you pretty much mirror what they said, or do you have a different take? How you feel? Um, well, well, I agree with everything that's been said. I'm gonna say this: um, a couple things. So, I, I'm having a difficult time with Tommy Reese in his his timing to make changes because that whole first half, like, I'm like, it doesn't take a rocket science. I, like, what's the problem? You know what I'm saying? I mean, because we're lucky that we were able to come back the way that we did in the second half, because mm-hmm. my thing is that I, going into this game, we, the first half, we made Tennessee look better than they are. We have to remember that they just, they just barely beat Texas AM, and I think just a week ago, you know, they lost to Florida. They only had one other road game, which was against Florida and they lost that. And, and shout out to um, Oliver Bacon, uh, that belt Miss Terry had at halftime work. Look, some work. Some, <laughs> some, some, she she on them. <laughs> right, right. Like, so my biggest thing, I felt like this game, Jalen Milrow was going to have to use his legs a lot more. I, I knew I had a feeling that they were going to stop the run in terms of Jace and uh, Roy Dell. But I also felt like we needed to uh, kind of like expose their secondary. I felt like we would be able to get more passes off in this game. And so I we we saw that in the second half. I mean, to me, it was already there. It was just the poor play calling. Now, early on in the first quarter, I did see um some poor play, play calling on the defensive side, but it to me it looked like Kevin still got that together really quickly. So, I don't know for Tommy Reese cuz a lot of times when they do put that camera on him when he's in that box, he has his head down and you can tell that he's, you know, he's confused and all and, and it, it annoys me and I'm like Tommy, like if we can see you're getting paid two million dollars a year, you can give me half of that and I can call a better place. And then no, it doesn't take that long to make the necessary changes. Like we you got you got Joe Milton out there doing the crane, like Matthew, like you don't come out here on our field taunting us like that. Like that's why number five got his behind knocked out by Bond. Like we, you don't do that at, at Bama's home. So you know, honestly, I was pissed off in that first half because I'm like, they're not this good. Like I refuse to allow our team 
to make Tennessee look better than they are. We didn't even give our defense time to get off the field. Like they, you can tell they were getting tired because our offense wasn't doing anything. Tennessee was literally driving that ball down the field easily. We could have just held their hand. Will Rocker probably went to the concession stand and got a drink or something because we, we weren't even getting down the field for him to get a field goal. Like, I'm like, I don't know what this is, but we need to be more consistent. Jalen, when he uses his legs, he can't be stopped. He needs to be more comfortable doing that. Forget about, you know, proving people wrong about his passing ability. You have to do what you got to do to win. Um, I do see another super chat. Uh, Jason Bernard, Lil, T Lil Tom struggles with third and five plus. I, I agree. And I I'm hoping that this is a wake up call for him because we can't do that against LSU. Can Damn. I add on to that real quick? Because I was thinking the same thing too. I want to say it was the, one of the third and fives, a read option. It just kind of seems like at times it gets a little too conservative when we're in field goal range. Like, I feel like a lot of us trust Will. He's come through in big moments most of the time. And I think you can afford to be a little bit more aggressive in those situations. Mm -hmm. You can take a shot down the field. If you do have a tendency to run the ball, we can run a little bit of play action or even get on the perimeter. But just like basic read options and conservative play calling in situations where we have playmakers that can make those plays, I just feel like that's kind of what's holding this offense back a little bit as well. Yep, man. So we're going to pass the offering plate after uh, pa Pastor Cishi's uh, sermon. I was touched, weren't y'all? Oh, there's your first uh, drop into the offering plate from D. Pickett, 499. I said it before, Bama like to make teams look better than what they are. Really My gosh, I think that was just – Well, it's not so much of that. It's because Bama gets everybody's best shot. Well, yes you know and no, but we, we do a lot to add to yeah. that. We we are our own worst we, we enemy do. at times. We do, man, but you gotta understand, man, that A on your chest, man. That that when you when you when you wearing that Alabama brand, man, team folks come for you, man. Like we get people's best shot. You gotta understand Joe Milton wasn't hasn't been five for five on a drive all his <laughs> life. You know Not what I'm saying? PlayStation and either. He comes out. I'm serious, man. People are people are he was nine of nine. You. always Chris. Well, since you've been under saving, when you played on coach, when y'all watch film and you get to the game, so it's something he's like, damn, this boy is, is really we didn't see that on film. Like they take people take it to another level, man, when they yeah. when they play Bama. Definitely, yeah. There's some people you just like we didn't really we didn't really talk about him too much. Like, where did he come from? <laughs> yeah. Always one person per game that's like that, yeah. Yeah. All right, so let's address it because we've been talking about it throughout the show and we've kind of held back and, and so we could have some time and then it's in the chat. It was definitely in our group text earlier on. Kool-Aid, phenomenal corner, shut down corner, did great today playing defense, but here's where the problem lies. Him as a punt returner, it's a liability. And again today, for whatever reason, he shies away from punts and puts us in a negative situation. Thankfully, it did not manifest in a way that could have hurt us. But if we continue to allow that to happen by either keeping him in or corralling that behavior, it's going to put us in a situation we might not be able to escape from. So, folks, let's, let's go around the room. How much of a liability is keeping Kool-Aid at punt return right now to this team? And if you were to take him out, who would be his replacement? See, so, let's start with you. Then we go to Dan, Chris, then Chris, and Lucian. Yeah, I definitely think, um, you know, he's good for what he does at corner. But to me, it's clear. I mean, I honestly, we lost some good field position a couple times tonight because of that. I mean, maybe Kendrick Law, we could put back there. It, somebody else can go back there. Now, I will say, and I said this last or this past uh, show, the Crimson Dynasty, that I wanted to see Kendrick Law more um, so Line, lining up as a receiver and, and you know, getting a couple uh, receptions. And I'm glad that we saw that tonight. But, yeah, I, I would move uh, Kool-Aid from that because to me it's obvious that he doesn't feel comfortable. And I can see, you know, uh, a team taking advantage of that to where we it, it, it can really be costly. So I would go ahead and pull him at this point. I mean, keep him at corner, let him do what he does there. But, yeah, I think it's that time. Officer Daquan Menzi, welcome in, sir. Glad to have you <laughs> with us, B Sci-Fi. <laughs> National champion winner. Hey, did you bring? Are you at the the jail? Did you bring somebody in? Is that what? Is that where you at right now? <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm off the road, bro. I don't do any of that, man. Oh, okay, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome in, brother. You uh, you're sure, in here sure. late, but 
we're glad to have you nonetheless. Uh, you know you've what? heard kind of what we started talking about. I, I want to get your take on it, and then we'll get go back to the order we established. But, yeah, your, your thoughts on, on Kool-Aid as punt returner, is that something we need to go forward with? Do we need to make a change? What do you, what do you feel, man? Yeah, I know how I feel about Kool-Aid. You know he needs to be off the point return, man. You've seen the mistakes that he made today. Um, it was a couple of them where he could have, he could have, uh, he could have, you know, he could have down and he didn't, bro. So I, I just don't understand why we continue to keep him there. Like I said, uh, probably three episodes ago, maybe I said put Kendrick Law back there. You see what he did today on the sweep, on the jet sweep. Mm-hmm. Man, he has the ability, man. So I, I think we need to make a change there. So that's how I feel about that. Kendrick definitely does have that second gear. If you saw him he on does. that jet sweep, uh, it looked like they may have had him in the backfield, but then he just stepped into another level and he's around the corner just like that. I think that would bode well for him if he's returning punts. Dan. Yes, definitely. The, you know, I can, I, I, there's no way you can justify keeping him back there. You know, because Saban, he, he trusts ball handlers. But he's not handling the ball. He's not fielding the punt, the first step, you know, fielding the punt. When, you, when you're you're hurting us when it comes to field is you're letting the ball bounce the, for another 15 yards when you can simply come up and catch it. You don't have to return it. Just catch it. Another reason it's not a great idea at all to have him back there. You know, we got Arnold hurt. You know what I'm saying? We get yep. Kool-Aid hurt. You know, you, you can't justify having him, you know, because right now he's hurting the team. I'm just saying like that. You know that's my guy. You know, but he he's hurting the team when it comes to being a, being a punt returner. That's all I'm gonna say on that. Okay, Chris, what's your take on it? Does a I'm change kinda, need to be made? I'm kind of conflicted because the history of Coach Saban, the Alabama, is our best players play on special teams. That's how it's always been, and there are times where he's definitely the best returner for the team. But when he's not fielding punts and he's giving up like vital field position like that, it's you kind of got to get into the mind of him, figure out what it is. Is it He's not seeing the ball right. Is he tired? Like kind of right. what's going on? I think he should be he should be in the role in an emergency situation. I wouldn't suggest keeping him out there full time. Like everyone else has said, I do like Kendrick Law. He's got some explosiveness. He can definitely do some work in open space. But I think diagnosing the problem first and figuring out what it is so that if we do need him down the line, he can step in. But no, it shouldn't be full time. For sure. That's 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 a great take. Chris James. Man, get that man from back there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying because I don't care if you don't return a single punt, bro. Like, think about it, man. If that would have been a one-score game and that would have happened, like, that could have cost us. That could have sent the game to overtime. You know what I'm saying? Like, at least fit, fair catch the punt. That's the first thing, fair catch it. Like, you don't have to be a dynamic punt. I, like, mm. Look at Georgia. When, when was the last time UGA had a dynamic um, uh, punt returner? Hey, hey man, Lad, Lad McConkey is dynamic, sir. Man, come on, bro. Who? <laughs> <laughs> oh? Who? <laughs> oh? that, that's but no, what, what I'm saying is, I'm, I mean, just think about it. Like they just, you just put somebody back there that can at least feel the punt, man. That's the first thing. And the guy, like, because in the probably the last three weeks, man, we've lost at least a hundred yards. So if he hasn't feel the punt in about three weeks, man. Besides, the, I think the one he caught today, and he didn't even try to. Re- uh, well, he tried to return one, but I mean, it, it didn't. He lost yards on that. Yeah, the last. Think about the last dynamic punt return we had on this team was the. Uh, was it the Damn. kickoff to Terry on a return back? Who was that that returned? Somebody else. I think it was Terry on. They got it called back. Yeah, the last, that was the last dynamic return period that we've had. So we've been uh, been lacking. In the because usually, man, they used to be think about in the past how that changed field position for us, man. Jalen Waddle, Javier Arenas, Eddie Jackson, you know what I'm saying? Like that, mm-hmm. when you can flip the field like that, and you can get a first down just by receiving a punt, just if you receive it on a field it on a team or just return it to the 23 or something. But dude, you let it roll, it bounced on the 20 and rolled like down to the three yard line or wherever it rolled to inside yeah. the five. So just, just, just feel it, man. But like we said, I would have personally have loved to see Terry on back there returning the punt. But with him being hurt, obviously he's out of he's out of there. Right. 
Give yeah. me a receiver, man. Give me somebody that's 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 lacking time, that's looking for more snaps. Kendrick Law. Oh, oh, yeah. um, uh, Isaiah Cole Bond. Adams. He's dynamic. Cole Adams. Um, uh, Shaz Preston. Somebody sure-handed. You know what I'm saying? Or or even um um, what's my guy Henderson? What's his name? Uh, Manuel Henderson. Manuel Henderson. Or Jan Miller. Jan, mm-hmm. Somebody, dude. You know what I'm saying? Jan Miller. Somebody. You know, so uh Chris, you mentioned a very good point about it being a two score game. Well, the thing was when we were backed up to the one, that could have there was enough time on the clock to where that two score game could have gone to a one score game to to being tied up because Tennessee has the ability to move the ball that quick and put points on the board. I mean, we saw what they did in the second half. Yes, they went through a lull, but they were dangerous just enough, and they had the right kind of play callers to where they could have been right back into it just like that had a mistake been made. So, yeah, that is a, a liability that thankfully we escaped from. All right. Real quick, Otis Jackson, Will Reichard is invited to the cookout. <laughs> no <laughs> doubt, no doubt. Lou yep. Young, close up this topic. No, he should not be back there. There's nothing I can say that hasn't already been said before. DQ addressed it a couple weeks ago. Chris has hit on it. Dan's hit on it. CeCe's hit on it. Chris said something about it. You've said something about it. I'm going to take it from a little bit of a different angle, though. When I see Kool-Aid in the past get a punt, he doesn't necessarily look for ways to run. He just tries to play keep away from the defense. I need somebody that can make their way through a defense mm-hmm. that isn't necessarily going to shy away from contact, a la Kendrick Law mm-hmm. or Emmanuel Henderson Jr., because we, we need someone back there that and, – and to be perfectly honest, and this is what might be speaking to what Chris was saying, he might be worried about getting hurt because he is our starting corner. And now if that's in his head, we need to go ahead and alleviate that pressure and just mm-hmm. let that man play what he's at Alabama to do, just be a shutdown corner, Go ahead and do what he needs to do because we do have plenty of other people mm-hmm. that can at least secure the punt. Like y'all said, we don't need somebody that can be an electric returner. We gave up 15, like almost 50 yards off just the ball bouncing. Yep. All we got to do is have somebody back there that can secure it. That's all we need. Flat out. Mm-hmm. Let me ask, let me ask this. Could it be draft draft stop protection? That's what that's what I really think. Because you think about it, I know it has to be in the back of his head. That's how Eddie Jackson got hurt. Eddie Jackson right. was on his way becoming the first rounder before yeah. he returned the punt and, and had a season in the search. And, so, that, and I, that last one, he 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 fair caught. And then, like, at the last moved second, out the way. Yeah. yeah. But and, and if yeah, that's the case yeah. and he, he's, he is uh, scared to get hurt, then take yourself out. That's plain and simple. Why continue to put yourself back there and put us in negative situations? And he tiptoed too much for me. He, he He's too much, like – his footwork isn't what it needs to be as a return man. When I think of return man, I think of somebody that has dynamic footwork. And mm-hmm. him, to me, he is a smooth athlete. He is a technical athlete. But when it comes to his actual footwork on the field, there we have people with better footwork. I'd, I'd even rather see Jermaine Burton back there because at least it's going to be explosive. It's yeah. gonna be it's gonna be with an attitude. Oh, I, oh yeah, it's gonna be explosive. Uh. That's what I'm saying. We, we need someone <laughs> back there that can change the dynamic of a game. That's what a return man's supposed to do. It, it, they're supposed to be electric, and we haven't had nothing electric come from our punt return. If anything, it's been negative. Right. Mm-hmm. Push, push. All right. Let's talk about a positive, guys. Let's push talk push. about energy. Energy is the big thing. It's something we've been asking for from our sideline since last year, or maybe even the year before. But Coach Saban had a plea for the fans this week on Hey Coach, where he asked people to show up and show out, get that stadium rocking. And I've been in Bryant Denny and Chris and Daquan and, and Chris James. When it's so loud, things are deafening. It's almost silent because it's so loud. And for the most part, up until tonight, it's been like you're at a golf tournament. That, that, that's what we got <laughs> and i think that also has contributed to the lack of energy on the sideline and I think we've criticized heavily criticized the team for having no energy on the sideline not getting each other's faces not getting up screaming yelling causing a ruckus i think if the stadium is like that every game 
and it fuels the energy of the players. And then it has a pivotal part in the outcome of a game. So let's talk about what we saw from Bryant Denny tonight and the players and how it contributed to this game. The Quan start us off, then we'll go to Chris Owens, Chris James, Lou Sean, then Cishi and Dan. Yeah, man, I think um, the crowd was way better than it was, you know, uh, prior to uh, this game that we played tonight. Well, today, uh, it matters, man, whether they know it or not, man. When you, when the crowd is in into the game, man, and they're and they're giving you that extra confidence, bro, that that helps you play better. That helps you play better, bro. And um, I think. Uh, if we if we can continue to get that support from the fans, man, I think I think our, our ceiling is very high. That's how I feel about it. Chris Owens, as a player, how what does it mean to you to have Bryant Denny at that le- that level? Yeah, it's especially for those types of games, big robbery games, it's a really big help. There were always games that us players knew in the locker room that these are the games we gotta bring our own juice. We probably will be a earlier kickoff or maybe a team that's not as good. Like we'll probably need to generate our own energy, but when you have the fans like that, it's electric. Everybody's involved on the sidelines. Everyone's bringing their mental intensity to the field and on the sidelines as well. Um, it's unmatched. And I don't think anybody can beat us in Brian Denny if, if we have all that. Right. <clears throat> Truth. Mr. James. Yeah, man. Uh, it's never been um, – I've been in Brian Denny for three – Tennessee games, no, 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 two because uh, we were, we play them on odd years for two mm-hmm. for in um oh one and oh three. Man, when I tell you, it's, it's like a different type of level of when we play uh Tennessee, LSU, or Georgia, any of those three in Tuscaloosa, it's a it's a level man that we wish we could have Brian Denny on every Saturday, you know what I'm saying? Because man, we definitely we definitely fed off the crowd, man. It it, it means it matters, man. You on defense, man, and, and that crowd is just deafening. It's like you feel like Superman. You know what I'm saying? And and, and when you're tired, it gives you an extra boost. It's just something about crowd noise, man. When when Brian Denny is live, man, it's it's a tough place to play. And I believe that today may have been the loudest we've been, woo, since pre-COVID. Like yeah, probably since the LSU game, 2019. Yeah. 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 You're right, Chris. <laughs> Shout out Brian Thomas, a dollar super chat. We appreciate you, you need everything. And we just need you to change that color of your uh, avatar there. <laughs> Lou Sean, how big of a difference did crowd noise make? And ultimately, do you feel like it had something to do with getting that sideline right? Uh, I think it did, especially going into coming out in the second half. I think it was important to like have everybody hit the reset button, including the crowd, because I kind of felt like in the second quarter, the crowd was kind of taken out of it, which mm-hmm. with good reason we all were. But they came out in the second half with a different type of energy. And I think that crowd helped fuel our offense and most importantly, our defense and being a little bit more physical and being a little bit more prideful in what they're doing. Because, I mean, they came out in the second half and just kicked the, kicked the living tar out of them. That's flat out what happened. See, we she. still hate Tennessee. Go ahead. <laughs> Let me get your thoughts, Cisha. You've been quiet yeah, for a cause, while. Because they steal some <laughs> snitches. <laughs> you, ain't, you ain't lying. I hate I hate They steal some hate. snitches, man. They still snitching. Nah, look, I um I, I would say hundred percent wholeheartedly because I always say energy energy is transferable, but I don't think it's just amongst the players and the coaches. Like, why even go to the stadium if you're gonna sit up there and look crazy? You know, like for me, it's like okay, let the players feel that because they don't have a problem getting online and talking talking trash if we don't perform well. So keep that same energy when you're in there needing to, sh- to show support or just stay at the house you know because when I was there when we played Texas I was like really feeling some type of way like I'm like I can't I can't be louder than everyone else in here like they, they, half the time they were sitting there looking dead like zombies so it's like okay well if you can be as vocal as you are when you're talking trash about Jalen Milrow or the mm. players when you get online but then when you're out here at the game you sit up there just wanting to get on the camera getting on TV then w- what's the point so I think we need to show I don't care who we play we need 
need to show up like that every single weekend, even at the away games. You know, I, I just I, I think we need to do better as a fan base. Um, you know, we need to show more support. And um, like I said, we we not Walmart fans over here. We're not gonna wait until the end of the season to go Ooh. get a shirt or act like we're finally supporters. Mm. No, if you're if you're a fan, be a fan and stick to that. We, I, I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. Man, That's I got right. a lot of great, great clippable material from Maybe no sports, tonight. man. He does sports. <laughs> That's right. what it is. He does sports the heck out of us, man. Hey, hey uh, no, Nelson Walmart, brings up speaking a of a Walmart fans. Speaking of Walmart fans, man, yeah, don't come jumping on the bandwagon now. We, what were we, seven exactly. and one? Exactly. No, no, go on back no, to the house. No. Go on back to the house with your Walmart shirt. Like, we don't need right. that. And, and speaking of yeah, Nelson, he mentioned Re uh, Reggie Raglan and Ryan Anderson. I thought I saw Courtney Upshaw out there, too, he right? Was. He was. Courtney Upshaw right? was out there, too. And I think they put the camera on him, number 41, when you had Chris Braswell out there chasing down Squirrel White. Like, why is he down? Why ain't no DBs down there? Like, <laughs> you know? <laughs> hey. Hey, yeah, he, for hey, real, for real, shout out was, to Braswell. He actually was staying with him. Hey, that was <laughs> cool. That was Kool Aid, DQ. Hey, that was Kool Aid. I, I, you seen him turn his back too? He <laughs> yep. ran with the other receiver. Yep. The, yeah, I know I you seen, seen that. I know you, you seen know that. Me. Yeah, you know me, yeah. man. You know that I'm good Kool Aid. Because Braswell if Red, back, if Red, Reggie and Ryan and Reggie Ryan and Courtney have something to say to the defense at halftime. I don't want them to score another point. Dan, in so many words. Yeah. So many words. Did you not acknowledge the uh, super chat from around the ham? Uh, we appreciate got, it. Uh, super chat from Jacob Hartline. Didn't Hart Arnold run a kick back against USF, but got called back? Agreed. Would like to see how Law back. See Law back there. Also, great game, great show. Roll Tide. Thank you, Jacob. While I find this other super chat, go ahead and Dan close up this. Topic. Oh, uh, ran the ham four ninety nine. We appreciate that. But yes, go ahead. Finish this topic off right, sir. Yes. Uh definitely shout out to the crowd in the in the second half, man. That that was a huge difference, man. They they made it deafening, you know what I'm saying? And you know, I, I like to see more of that from you know in, in Brian Denny. You know, uh so it's uh a great shout out to our fans that we're being hard on and they answered Coach Saban's call in the second half. Yeah, they definitely did. All right, this this shift now to where we go from here, guys and lady. <laughs> we had the big win. We showed up the way that we've been asking for in terms of offense. Where do we go from here? What what is in the uh, the training on the off week? What is the mindset like? How do we approach LSU? Daquan, start us out, and then let's jump up to Chris Owens and Chris James, Lushan, Cishi, and Dan. Man, I, I just think we gotta we gotta start off uh, how we played the second half, man. Um, if we can do that, man, I don't see nobody beating us at all. I don't see nobody beating us at all, man. I think we have to get out of that complacent mindset because I we tend to I don't for some reason we we are a complacent team, man. We play with a lot of complacency, man. A lot of, um, um, a lot of, uh, a lot of doubt, a lot of miscommunication, and I think we just all need to go on the same page. We all need to get on the same page, man. And um, as far as just where we go from here, man, I just, I think our ceiling is still very high. I think our ceiling is still very high, man. I just. I need to see more communication on the sideline, man. Um, in, even in the, off and on the field, man. Um, I just think we all can just do a, a better job all together, man. So I think our ceiling is very high. Mm, no doubt. Chris, what's the thought going forward? What do you address in the off week? How do you get better? Talk to us about that and then LSU. I think one of the – best things that we did during the bye week, especially when I was playing, that was the time where we really honed in on our identity, figured out who we wanted to be as a team. If we had some stuff that we did well in the previous weeks, let's build on that. Anything that we didn't do well, but we wanted to bring that forward, we worked on that a lot. Um, getting a lot of guys healthy, getting some younger guys reps, figuring out who can help us down the stretch when we need to play. If we get in a situation like Auburn 2021, where we need a receiver to step in, the Corey Brooks steps in as a freshman and makes a big play. Um, so you find those guys in the bye week. And as far as for LSU, 
You get two weeks. I trust Coach Saban more than any other coach in sports. If you have extra time to prepare for somebody, um, build on what we've done and, you know, get ready for a big game because that's going to be another must-win game. Every game from here on out is pretty much a playoff game. God, no doubt, no doubt. Chris, pick up where Mr. Owens left off. And based on what you saw tonight, can the offense be consistent and replicate if- – or better, this performance against LSU, who already leads the SEC in offense. Well, we better. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, excuse me. But, but, uh, <laughs> this is Christian Snow, sir. You said, I didn't think I heard that. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, man, but um, the off week, um, that's usually this, um, it's usually the time that you get healthy, number one, um, you clean up. You have extra time to clean up some things, and then you find the guys that that who are going to carry you through the month of November and, and beyond. Like Chris said, like if a, if a young guy who, who's you deciding if you're going to redshirt them, he may be at that like right now maybe on oh, that fourth game. You, you you decide if you're going to go ahead and burn that red shirt on them, or if you're going to you know kind of things like that, man. And, and who's going to be the guys you roll with, with the rest of the season, and um. It, it um also um I think that the offense definitely uh can that's some they 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 left something to build off of and I think they definitely can do that. Um this is the week you really clean up and fine tune things. Um like this week I, I expect this week pretty much to be um the, especially the first part of the week to be heavily fundamental. You're gonna mm-hmm. see a lot of guys out, a lot of guys on the training bike, a lot yep. of guys in the training room, a lot of guys missing practice. And it's going to be younger guys getting reps like the first part of this week. And then towards the later of the week, you start inserting some LSU. Uh, uh, but I, I think that uh, we, we, we we take what we did best today and kind of build on that and kind of like implement that. for the, Because like I said, LSU's defense is nowhere near as good as Tennessee. Like, uh, so we should have success offensively. And, man, if we find that success we had today, we might be able to – the, 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 to thump them because I know it's going to be a rival game. LSU is going to come in, but I, I just expect us to get more stops on them than they will on us. Um, so, but in order to do that, we 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 definitely have to um have to have to hone in on um the, the pickup where we left off. One penalty, mm. one penalty, like that's a blessing. Wow, yeah. Compared to last week. <laughs> Dave E, best comeback since second and 26 to win a natty in Georgia. Then we got a super chat from Brian Thomas, $3. Campbell is a grown man. More jet sleep. <laughs> Sweet with law. Yes, please. We like some of that. Right. Lou, Sean, let's get your perspective on, on, on going forward. One thing that Chris Owens mentioned was finding that November warrior. You know, we have yet to see Justice Haynes take a big role. And I feel like he can be incorporated in this offense because he can be very special. Who do you see being the November Warriors that maybe we haven't seen just yet? You know, I got I got a list of about three or four no, of my November Warriors personally, but I thought we saw one of them uh, take the field today in Trey Amos. Mm-hmm. For sure. He stepped yep. up in a big, big way, and I think they're going to lean on him a little bit more with rotation-wise with something we talked about in the final whistle, bringing him in at corner, keeping uh, Malachi when Malachi he gets healthy bet. from his head mm-hmm. and putting uh, Malachi back deep with uh, Caleb Downs to sure up our coverage a little bit more where Jalen Keyes tends to struggle. But I also think uh, on the defensive side, I think this week might be the one we actually might see the transfer Justin Jefferson because Jaden Daniels does give a unique – kind of dilemma when it comes to the quarterback because he's shifty and he's light on his feet and i'm not taking anything away from our linebackers or what we've seen between campbell lawson and uh, chesman marshall but marshall is very heavy footed Mm -hmm. lawson's got to command the defense and campbell's got to be in coverage so i think this might be the week that kevin Steele might insert number 28 to just straight up spy spy Jaden Daniels in third third and long situations because that man is fast and he is physical enough to bring Jaden Daniels down where I think that could pretty much if we keep Jaden Daniels in check I think that's the only thing that could really hurt us LSU wise 
If we do that, we're gonna roll. And on the offensive side, uh, yeah, I got, I got, I got two guys for y'all. Um, number one, Justice Haynes. Mm-hmm. I think we're gonna see something. A couple packages that we haven't seen so far. I think, I think they're keeping them under the hat for these uh, big games coming up. And uh, someone, someone that you guys uh, have forgot about. Well, I haven't forgot about, but uh, Kobe Prentice. Mm-hmm. Kobe Prentice is going to be my winter soldier because I'm going to tell you something. Kobe Prentice in a one-on-one situation, he's winning that nine times out of ten. And I feel like because everybody's going to be concentrated on uh, Benson or not Benson, uh, Burton. Everybody's going to be keen on Bond going deep. You got Kobe Prentice as a Swiss Army knife, and that that boy's feet are quick. So that's my. Uh, Three November Warriors for y'all. All right. Sounds great. See she take over. What do you expect to happen in this off week? And then your thoughts going forward to LSU. Well, I think um, you know, starting tomorrow, we we need to get Tommy Reese all the help he can get. I mean, honestly, we we can't we can't risk we we saw it last week against Arkansas how we kind of let our foot off the gas in the second half. We saw the first half of this. I, I just think that whatever help he needs, he needs to get it fast. Um, I think that because to me, it 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 shows up in the offense. You know, you, we saw Jalen Milrow get frustrated early on in the in the first half. I think that we need to get Tommy Reese some help, whatever that looks like. I think that um, I personally would still like to G- see Jalen Hill out there. I, I I mean, I still think that he's gonna he's gonna be a key guy I mean and I I keep saying it I don't know if maybe he needs more um more reps out there but I definitely think that he's going to be a key to the offense I think um you know going up against LSU we can't let Jaden Daniels get that ball off his hands now I agree that their defense is not as good as Tennessee per se so I can definitely see um if Tommy Reese is able to create some creative plays I do I do think that you know Jalen Milrow may have to use his legs a little bit but I think that we can incorporate Jam Miller I said he I'm still a big you know advocate for him because I feel like with his size and his speed you know I think that we can kind of get you know some positive yards maybe five six you know with him but I definitely think that you know one of the keys for us um plan as well as we did in the second half today was basically what we did on on the first drive the first down I think getting those positive yards up front and I saw like um I think CJ Dupree he didn't get a reception until the third quarter I think he only had one now I, I remember he got banged up a little bit last week but I'm thinking going into the game against LSU we definitely have to see more um more carries with the with the tight ends whether that's you know CJ Dupree Amari Nye Black you know Robbie Ooze it was good to see him out there blocking today but I just want to see um going into this season there was a lot of talk about Malik Benson but we see who's been showing up Jermaine Burton and he got that dog in him not mm-hmm. not anything against Malik Benson I think that he's going to get some um you know some explosive plays too here and there but I just think that Burton is going to be one of our go-to guys I think um just like Lucian said Justin Jefferson I want to see one of those young guys whether it's uh probably maybe Kobe Prentice more so than Shaz Preston but I think that they can work Shaz in there but I think the key to the offense is going to have to be because how can we keep asking uh Jalen Miro to be more consistent and to do xyz but the play calling isn't really working in his favor to me it, like you got to have both you know what I'm saying I feel like we talk about chemistry between Jalen Miro and the receivers or whomever but what about the coaches you know I don't know if Tommy Reese is get out that box I don't know what needs to happen but it needs to happen fast so I um I definitely think that you know we have we have some uh opportunities ahead of us every week people say the same thing like oh this is going to be the game for Alabama every mm-hmm. week so they're going to say that about this game against LSU but I think that um you know looking at Trez Marshall and Jihad Campbell I mean Jihad Campbell I mean he, he he did everything today that we wanted him to do so I, I just think that you know the defense I believe we're good there I think the offense is going to really come down to Tommy Reese and what, what he's able to do and you mentioned a very key point right there get him help and help needs to come Right now, because as Davis Lewis Love has pointed out right here, don't forget, Brian Kelly knows Tommy Reese very well. So this is a situation where he can't be predictable. He's going to have to really earn that paycheck in this game and go above and beyond. Be creative. You're going up against your former boss, and your former boss knows your tendencies. And it's time for the student to defeat the teacher. So what are you going to do at this point 
to make that happen. And then I'll let you take over from that perspective. But we got a few super chats before you do that. Around the ham 499, proud of the team. A few observations. Why can't we? Why can't Milro hit anyone in stride? Why aren't they playing whistle to whistle? Lots of lazy players. And then D pick at dollar 99. Burton is the homie that starts fights in the club. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dan, finish this up and then we'll go to our players of the game before we head out. Yeah, um, like you said, you know, he, he's going against his former boss who, who didn't take him with him to LSU. You know what I'm saying? So, he, you know, so it, this ought to be personal for Tommy Reese. You know, but see, she, she did a great job of talking about Tommy Reese. But uh, things I want to see us address in the coming weeks, let's, let's get guys healthy and let's address our weakness on special teams that we talked about earlier, you know, with the, in the punt return game. But, uh, you know, our November Warriors, man, it's going to continue. It's going to continue to uh, be the same guy that it had been. We're going to ride Tim Keenan. You know, mm -hmm. I don't remember the last time we had a no tackle. Probably Quentin Williams played as many snaps and be effective throughout the game. You know, he, he controlled the line of scrimmage, even while being double teamed. You know, so he's the guy that makes it all happen on defense. You know, Tennessee tried. They couldn't get the run game going. And that's the only thing, really, that kept us in the game in the first half. It could have gotten ugly had they been able to gash us with the run. You know, so his play, especially in the first half, that is the reason we won the game. Mm, mm. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I love that. All right, now it's time to go around the room. Let's give our offensive and defensive MVPs of the game. Just a few stats for those who didn't really keep score at home. Alabama had one penalty. That's right, folks, one penalty. Jalen Merrill was 14 of 21 for 220 yards and two touchdowns. Had an interception that we really can't, you know, throw on him. It bounced off of Jermaine's helmet or shoulder pad, rather. Jace had his best day of the season, 27 carries for 115 yards and at 4.3 yards per carry and a touchdown. Isaiah Bond had three catches for 77 yards and a touchdown. And Jermaine did his thing, four catches for 62 yards and a touchdown. But we need to know what y'all thought. Who stood up to you? Who were the difference makers in this game? Maybe it goes beyond the stat sheet. Let's start with Cishi, then go to Dan, then Chris, then Chris and Lushan. Right, right. So because I can't just name one on defense, I'm, I have a few. I'm, I'm going to do the same for the offense. I would say offensively, Jason McClellan, of course, because, you know, to me, Tennessee made a difficult all game for him to run, but he still was able to, you know, make some uh, effective plays. And I think it's just the his style of play, even after the initial, you know, tackle, uh, if you will. I think, um, you know, Jason McClellan, for sure. Jermaine Burton, for sure, too, because I think just that that dog that he has in him. I mean, to me, it makes him one of those relentless players that you you know that you can you know rely on so definitely Jermaine Burton and then uh, of course Isaiah Bond on offense but then on defense I would say uh Dallas Turner um he had a few uh you know big plays even if it was just you know rushing Joe Milton um I think he had some good plays um I would also say uh Chris Braswell I mean I think we saw him throughout the game you know he he's been in, in his game after game he's been consistent these past few games but then also uh Jihad Campbell I mean this guy like he he's been doing his thing so we we have to, you know, give him his uh, his his props. But those are my three on both sides. Strong selections. Dan, what did you see? Yeah. My offensive MVP, I'm, I'm going to say this guy had his best game, and I actually think he made some money today. It's easy to go with Jason Cleland. But mm -hmm. the guy who actually did an outstanding job, and I think he had his best game as a Alabama player, that would be J.C. Latham. Mm. So the job that he did in the run game as well as pass pro. I think he had his best game as an Alabama player. On the defensive side of the ball, I got two players. I got uh, Jahad Campbell, of course. He was second on the team in tackle with 10. And Chris Braswell with two huge sacks. You know, that, those are my two defensive MVPs. I like those choices. Chris Owens, what you got? Who you got, rather? Well, I'll be kind of predictable. For my offensive players or players of the game, I'm going to go with the two guards, Jaden Roberts and T. Book on the other side. I think they played really well. They had a very, very big role in this game. Tennessee's front seven is very strong, and especially with them plugging their backers and blitz as much as they do, um, moving, stunting every play pretty much. 
those guys to have the discipline to be where they're supposed to be, be firm in the run game and the pass game. I think that allowed Milro to feel comfortable and not feel like he had to evade the pocket so soon. Mm-hmm. You know, defense, I was going to go with Braz, and then I was going to go with Jahad Campbell. But somebody else I had my eye on was Justin Boydby. I think yeah. he was good in the run game, especially early downs. Um, when they were pulling at him, he was very quick to box the run, uh, made a couple good plays, and he was overall just stout on the defensive line today. Real quick, who wants to take this question? Nelson, question for the panel. Did Caleb Downs seem a little lost today? He was missing sh- for sure tackles that he usually doesn't miss. Who wants to tackle that? I'll tackle it. Well, you know, it's just freshman growing pain, man. Sometimes you hit that freshman wall, you know. Uh, like a game like Tennessee with Hypo's hurry up offense, man, it, it, it's your thought process has to has to you know be like that and sometimes yeah. that can that can kind of confuse a freshman um you know having to line up so quickly and 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 play again another snap or whatnot so um it's just all about getting lined up faster you know um, as he i mean it'll, it, it'll get better for him as he sees this more and more as the year goes on just it's, i just attribute to him being the young guy you know mm-hmm. um, he's still, first, he's still a third on the team in tackles though so i mean yeah right so, I wouldn't I wouldn't put too much on it. No, not at all. Not He's eighteen. No. Nah. But Chris, who are your players of the game? Um, offensively, Jace McClellan, man. I mean, he he ran hard, man. He looks like the Jace that we recruited, you know, four years ago out of Texas. Um, defensively, Jahad Campbell, man. That wasn't he a difference maker out there, man? Like yeah. it just it just looks it looks it looks so. It, it, it's, it's just it, I, I don't wanna, I don't know how to explain it between him and Tresman Marshall. Tresman Marshall is a pretty much downhill, you know, you got heavy feet type of linebacker. Right. But Campbell man scoop and score for a touchdown. He made some key third down stops on some passes that him. were out in the flat. That you know that he made some sure tackles on. Uh, Braswell ball too, man. Braswell ball too. Um, um, so it, it, I, it's kind of tough between those two, but Jahad Campbell, just the impact he made, man, just how we just shut him down second half. Like, Tennessee didn't score a single point in the second half. When the last time somebody could say they probably shut down the Josh Hyper offense like that, you know, uh, in the second half. So I'm going with Campbell and uh, special teams, man. You got to give it to Mr. Reliable, you know, Will Riker. Um, hey, hey, burn up Mr. Reliable too now. Don't yeah, burn about our man, boy. But, but, yeah, but but let me ask you. I love Burnham, but is he the best punter in the country? No. Yes, you can say Will Riker is the best kicker in the country. Yes, you can. Yeah. So, uh, uh, those are my three: uh, McClellan, right. um, Campbell, and Riker. Lushan, who you got? Who are your MVPs? You know, um, my offensive MVP is uh, a little bit different because uh, I feel like this guy brings attitude. And I like attitude. I know a whole bunch of Bama Nation wants to hate on this dude for his on-the-field antics. But I love Jermaine Burton. I love offensive Tony Brown. Because you know what that does? That makes the other team not forget that Alabama ain't soft. You ain't about to walk over us on either side of the football, especially the offensive ones. And he's one of the main ones. Jace McClellan, too, a lot of times. But Jermaine Burton, every time he gets the ball with an attitude, he makes you feel that you're playing Alabama football. And on the defensive side, I got a tie for two. Campbell played amazing, but y'all can't forget, everybody gets lined off off what 32 calls out. My defensive player of the game, MVP of the game, if not, was Deontay Lawson. He Mm. was making sure people was in the right spots. He was coming downhill, and he had his nose and everything all night. And I'm not going to forget about Will Riker because, let's face it, still Will is still the best kicker, probably the MVP of our season so far because, I mean, let's face it, oh, we're third and five, and Tommy Reese is like, well, we're just going to keep it simple because Will's going to hit a field goal. And, well, yeah, it is what <laughs> happens, but you got to be a little bit more aggressive. You know, at least make Will sweat a little bit. I mean, <laughs> he goes out there like, oh, hold my juice real quick, Coach. Well, you, know, <laughs> you know, Lucian, he, he had he went to the concession stand in the first half. I mean, they didn't have, they couldn't drive the ball down the field. No, you know? he, he, I don't even think he had his pads on. 
<laughs> Tommy Reese up in that box, like, hey man, Will, put your pads back on. We're, we're gonna make sure you play in the second half. Yeah, <laughs> nice. I still didn't like his body language. You know what I'm saying? The 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 face in the palm from Tommy Reese. You know he got to show more confidence. Hey, you know what I think that is, Dan? I think that's him hiding what he's calling play wise. So he feels like if he just puts his head down and mm. you know just maybe he'll come up with a miracle play, but you know they won't be able to read his facial expressions. <laughs> that's what I tell myself personally when they show. Yeah, I'm yeah, not sure that's yeah. what's going on. Yep. <laughs> Everybody can't be like Lane Kiffin, coming in like Lane Kiffin, throw their hands up before the while the yeah. ball's in the air. Man. You know what I'm saying, man? We, we were spoiled by Lane Kiffin and Sark. Yes. You know, two of the most confident Big play college. callers. You know, <laughs> yeah, that, that Lane throwing up touchdown before the ball. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, Speaking oh, we're that. scoring here. Hey, D- Dable was a bad boy, too, now. Yeah. Speaking of that, yeah. Lane's playing right now, so let me keep my answer short and sweet so yeah. we can get to some more games because we have an entertaining night still ahead of us. I got Offensively, I'm going to go with the entire offensive line unit. This is probably their best game they played the entire season. They came when we needed them the most, the biggest game of the season. They showed out, and I got to give them my hats off for sure. And then Jihad Campbell, my gosh, difference maker the entire game. And then we needed that pivotal swing in the game to really seal it all. He shows up, scoop and score, touchdown, Bama's up 14 to nothing, does not look back. Will Reichard, special teams player of the game. All right, before we head out, I'm going to go around the room, let everybody pop their socials. And for those, well, everybody on this panel has a show, so pop your show. I'll start with CC, then go to Dan. And Chris, you tell us where to find you on social media, what you got coming up next, and then we'll head over to the other Chris and Lucian will finish us out. All right. All right. So uh, some of you already know we have the Crimson Dynasty, which is the sister channel of the Bama Standard. So I go live every Wednesday night at 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Eastern. Um, I've been having Coach Smook on um, a lot lately. So, you know, we we break it down. Like I like to one thing about me, I like to analyze our opponent. I mean, because how can you beat your opponent if you don't know what to you know what to do against them? So I like to really break down our upcoming opponent and just talk about, you know, what it's going to take for us to win. But I don't want to to just because to me there's a different mentality between winning versus going in you know with the goal to dominate and honestly that's Bama football so that's really what I would like to see but uh be sure to tune in every Wednesday night and then also my social um primarily on Instagram is uh beauty underscore of underscore intelligence so you'll see it on the screen there awesome awesome Dan the king of Twitter Twitter a at final whistle Dan that's the handle there in front of you um, you can catch me every Tuesday night, 9 p.m. Uh, Eastern, 8 p.m. Central, you know, the uh, final whistle show. And, uh, you know, you catch me in weekly, you know, well, I, uh, the post game show on the same very channel. But, uh, you know, I appreciate the uh, support and everything, guys. And uh, make sure y'all hit the like and subscribe button. Yes, sir. Most definitely. Chris Owens, we appreciate you being on, giving us your thoughts, man. Tell the folks how they can find you, what you got coming up up next. And is L.A. Knight going to take out Roman Reigns at Crown Jewel? Um, Well, you can find me pretty much everywhere, Instagram, Twitter, BG Chris Owens. Um, Hopefully, you'll see me playing on Sundays at some point in the fall. If not, you'll see me in the spring playing football, working my way back up. Um, Other than that, I'll be watching playoff baseball. I do love baseball, so – Hoping that the Rangers can make a comeback because I hate the Astros. <laughs> um, is LA not going to win? No. Unfortunately, I want him to win. I just don't think Crown Jewel's the stage he needs to win on. I Agreed. Think later stage, but it should be entertaining. But it'll definitely be – it won't be a walk in the park. It won't be a squash match. Good, good, good. I think that's more of a WrestleMania win. So hopefully we can revisit that match at WrestleMania yeah. if he doesn't face The Rock. So Yeah. Chris James, what's up, y'all? You can um you can find me on on Facebook at uh, Chris K James Senior on on uh, Instagram at CKJ Senior thirty two, um and on Twitter at Coach Chris James. Um, you can find me on Tuesday nights right here on the Bama Standard Network on um, the episode of the Final Whistle. Uh, we definitely will uh, dig into this game from other you know. Uh, other aspects of the game where you also have Mac Dell, um, Ty Hayes, Coach Schmook, and the, and the rest of the crew. Um, so 
Um, that's where you can find me. And um, make sure y'all hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't on this show, man. Justin, Justin has really um, built something great here, and, and you know, giving Bama, Bama Nation a platform to um, to really um, get all things Bama. You know, get more more insight than what you'll get from a normal normal show. Go ahead, Dan. Yeah, I got a question for CG. Hey, um, if I were to let you borrow my TV, would that make it CG TV? <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> I don't even know how to answer. <laughs> I don't know this, how to answer that. My mind was just working, you know. I guess I so. Did you work a double today? Did you work a double today, Dan? You know, when he went to Waffle House, he thought about yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, hey, hey, my, 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 heart, my heart dropped. I thought he was going to hold up that can of Flanders. <laughs> <laughs> Lou, Sean, where, they, where can oh, they find you, sir? Man. Oh, y'all know you can find me on Instagram, uh, Lou, Sean. Uh, same thing on Facebook. Uh, my Twitter handle is actually in uh, my tag, Lou 21 and you can find me on uh, Tuesday nights also with Chris, Big Dan, and Justin sometimes on the best show. No offense, CC. The hey. best show that we got, CC. We, still there. We, we but the final do. whistle. Wait, wait, wait a minute. I'm just saying, man. The do final I need to remind you of the flagship hey, you, show? Hey, look. You lucky I got stuff to do and I can't be on here dragging you all night. But yeah. Hey, listen, <laughs> hey you, you, you have my personal information. Well, I'll go back with you. I ain't scared. It's whatever. Um, Wednesday night it, on the Crimson Dynasty uh, versus battle between Sishi and Lushan. Hey, I'm <laughs> down. There. We can get it in. <laughs> I'm down. No. Great show. I thank you to everybody on our panel. I thank you to everyone in the chat that made this show do what it did. Remind everybody to please follow us on all social media platforms at the Bama Standard on TikTok at the underscore Bama Standard. We have a brand new website, the Bama Standard.com. Check out news articles and everything you need to know about what we're doing. Also, too, Tuesday night, 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Eastern, the Bama Standard, the flagship show. And as my panel definitely mentioned, the final whistle, 8 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. Eastern, that same night. Then Wednesday night, see she will bring it home for us with the Crimson Dynasty, 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Eastern. And then we bring it all to a close at the end of the week with a Bama Standard post game show. Great show, everybody. Great show. Smoke Thank if you, you got it. Yes, sir. Alabama 34, Tennessee 20. Smoke them if Smoke you got them. Em. We ain't talking about them Zooties. We ain't talking about pubbing on Zooties. Look, look, we sent we, we we sent them snitches home. So you know. Damn right. We still hate Tennessee. We hate Tennessee. And as Chris Owens is reminding everybody, the champ is here. What's wrong with that orange?